I'd like to call this meeting to order. I welcome you to the Town of Hope Mills Board of Commissioners regular meeting. We are having our meeting uh, with live streaming while we are here with following the governor's orders with our fewer people on the inside. We do have some with special comments that will be coming in. We have with us this evening Deacon Pat Snyder from Good Shepherd Catholic Church who's going to lead us in our invocation followed by our Pledge of Allegiance. I'd ask Pastor Snyder if he would come to, or Deacon Snyder if he would come to the podium at this time. All please rise. Let us begin as we do all good things in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we take a moment to pray for God's blessing, let's start for, by praying for our great nation and our community. At this time of tribulation, we join our hearts to beg for your mercy, O Lord. Please turn our nation from this culture of death, call the violence in our streets, inspire your people to stop living in fear so that we may all turn back to you and become the people that you want us to be. Let us also pray for the protection and safety of the men and women who risk their lives every day so that we can enjoy the blessings of freedom in our country and safety in our homes, particularly our brothers and sisters in arms who are deployed in defense of our nation. Heavenly Father, all legitimate authority comes from you, and you have taught us that civil authority is necessary for the good order of society. You have also taught us that all law and civil authority is subordinate to and subject to your law. We beg you to bless this board with the gifts of the Holy Spirit, wisdom, understanding, counsel, fortitude, knowledge, piety, and fear of the Lord, as they strive to support the residents of Hope Mills. Remind us all, Lord, that we are but servants, and the way we serve you is by serving our neighbor. And we ask all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. And may Almighty God bless this board, all who present their petitions and comments to it, and the hardworking people who support the town and the whole mills, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the, the flag of the United, of the United States, States of America, America and, and to, to the republic, republic for which it stands, stands one, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, with, with liberty, liberty and, and justice, justice for, all. for all. You may be seated. Thank you. I have been asked to remind those <coughs> that speak to speak into your microphone. Uh, the recording that we had this past week, uh, there were several that said that we were not talking loud enough. So if you will, make sure you speak into your microphone as we are live. Sometimes it's, it's harder to pick it up as it would be when we do our other type of recordings. At this time, we have two items that I need to add to the agenda. Both would be going under uh, new business. The, yes? We're not, we don't have any sound. Okay. It should okay. be on now. Okay. Well, I will fix that. <laughs> I'll make it under closed session. Okay. Uh, our agenda at this time, we have uh, two items to add. One would be an addition of item G under new business, and that's to discuss and possibly take action on the recommendations from the nominating committee. And then another one would be an addition uh, to conduct a closed session pursuant to North Carolina GS 143-31811 to discuss personnel matters. Is there anything that you would like to add uh, to or take away from the agenda at this time? If not, do I have a motion to approve the agenda with those two items added? Motion, motion. to approve. Have a motion to approve and I second. have a second. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Seeing none opposed. First thing we have on our agenda is presentation. I'm going to invite uh, Ms. Kathy Johnson to come to the microphone, to the podium, and she'll be presenting the Yard of the Month from the Hope Mills Appearance Commission.
Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh -huh. We do have on our agenda the recognition of the venturing crew. However, the, uh, le the leader has not sent me the names of the 22. She did not have all of them. She's going to wait till she com completes the list. But the 22 that would be recognizing are the ones that took their own time on a Saturday to go down and clean the lake park and the area down there. Uh, so these uh, young men and women uh, during this, especially this time of, with everything going on, volunteered their services. And, and it was especially hot that day, too. So we'll recognize them and do an individual certificate for them uh, soon. Next, we have, there's no public hearings, public comments. And I would like to remind those with public comments, each speaker is asked to limit comments to three minutes, and the total comment period will be 30 minutes or less. The citizens that have signed up with the town clerk, I do have a list of those, and I do also have a list of those that submitted written uh, information. The board is interested in hearing your concerns. The speaker, should not, the speaker should not expect the board action or deliberation on subject matter brought up during the public comment segment. Topics requiring further investigation will be referred to the appropriate town officials or staff and may be scheduled for a future agenda. So at this time, I'll start with the list that we have that can be called on the inside. First, I have Myron Nullwood. You just introduce yourself and uh, give your address and then you can start your comment okay um hi um my name is manon millwood may i take my mask off yes ma'am okay, okay. Uh, my name is manon millwood and i live at 5405 heather street which is in the fairway forest subdivision i've lived at this residence for 20 years um, during these years i have witnessed the growth of hope mills um, at times though it does seem it's as if we are growing faster than some of our roads will allow. What brings me here today is the ongoing traffic situation on Gulfview Drive, specifically the area between Rockfish Road and the entrance to the old golf course. For my subdivision, along with several others that I can name, the only way to Main Street is via Gulfview Drive. At peak times, Gulfview can back up both ways from Rockfish Road all the way back to Main Street and from Rockfish Road all the way past the entrance of the golf course. It can take three to five red light cycles before we actually get to cross over Rockfish Road and move about our day. Um, when school is in session, it's even worse. At times, the side streets, like Wallace or Suchak, have to rely on the kindness of drivers to even be permitted to enter and get onto Golfview Drive so that they can continue on their day. All of this is to say that I'm concerned that there is a golf view access study to determine if the proposed par four village will exit onto golf view drive for the committee members on that study. 
I simply ask, how will the traffic flow be assessed? Uh, will the subdivisions further down the street be considered? I believe those subdivisions are Fairway Forest, Fairway Forest East, Fairway Forest West, and I think maybe even Eaglewood. What other options could be developed or are possibly being looked into rather than an outlet onto Golfview Drive? And at what point is Golfview simply too saturated? I'm speaking today to raise these concerns and ensure that adequate input from all the residents be taken before final decisions are made with regard to the par four village outlet. I thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Next we have Charlie Gardner. You can take your mask off. Thank you. Just introduce yourself and your address. Good evening. My name is Charlie Gardner. I'm an attorney in Hope Mills. My law office is located at 5535 Trey Street here in Hope Mills. And as many as you know, I represent my parents, Charles and Janet Gardner. I would just like to give notice to the public that my parents do own the mineral rights to a 20 acre parcel of land that is being proposed for development as a 114 unit residential duplex community off of Rockfish Road and Crampton Road, I believe it is called Par 4 Village. This parcel is currently owned by GMR Capital LLC. My parents also own the mineral rights uh, to an adjacent 33 acre parcel of land currently owned by JNM of NC Incorporated. My parents acquired these mineral rights, also known as subsurface rights, from Dixie Group Incorporated by a deed recorded on November 4th, 2005 in book 7059, page 681 of the Cumberland County Register of Deeds. Dixie Group Incorporated, formerly known as Dixie Yarns Incorporated, reserved these mineral rights when they conveyed the surface rights to the aforementioned properties to Rockfish Golf Club by those deeds recorded in October of 1967 in deed book 2063, page 143, and on July 29, 1969 in deed book 2168, page 263, both of course, Cumberland County Register of Deeds. Certain deeds in the chains of titles to both parcels have mentioned these mineral rights reservation, and some have not. This has no bearing on the fact that they were in fact reserved and are an exception to title to both properties. These mineral rights have also been listed for ad valorem taxes as required by the statutes in North Carolina for as long as my parents have owned them. The purpose of this public comment period is to raise the question if the developers of Par 4 Village plan on disclosing to potential buyers that they do not and will not own the mineral rights and are therefore subject to having their residents removed in order to explore for and or extract any possible minerals located beneath them. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you, sir. Next, we have Richard Luganow. Take the mask off. Again. Yes, sir. You sure can. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Madam Mayor, Commissioners, it's Adam. How you doing? Uh, not got a lot to say tonight. I think I said it the last time I was here, but I wanted to kind of update things. I know we got a committee being set up to talk, discuss the issues that are going on over there in, in Gulf Acres. We appreciate that. And also, I understand that you've selected Mr. Uh, uh, Maynard to be on the uh, committee, and you're going to announce that tonight, and we appreciate that effort. Uh, just to let you know that the, the signees we had on this petition is up to 391 now. Uh, me and Mr. Uh, Gillis from in the neighborhood went through uh, Crampton Road this last Saturday to discuss this issue with everybody on Crampton. We wanted to make sure they were aware of what was going to go on. So we went down Crampton Road all the way from, from where the... Uh, entrances into the golf course the old golf course all the way out to rockfish we went to some homes on sioux shack that will be a pivotal point of traffic running through there uh, if this thing is opened up and we did a few around Tr crenshaw drive and crampton road also but we talked to uh, 31 different residents in on that street and all of them were against that proposal to open up that road um, some of the issues that was brought up during the time we were discussing this was neighborhood, and I'll go over those real quickly. I know I've only got a minute there. Uh, speed bumps, if indeed this does happen, and hopefully it doesn't, uh, there will be speed bumps put in at Camp Crampton Road and Sushak because Sushak's like the Indianapolis 500, continuously traffic flying down through there in the morning and the evenings. 
it, dangerous for my wife to even walk around the block when she gets down there with her dog because of the way the traffic's going. So we'd highly recommend if, it, if this thing is goes through, which we hope it does not, that we put speed bumps on those roads. Also, uh, this could this come up in discussion because of what we saw in the plans. I understand there's some plans for this development and it included a retention pond. The concern we would have if whether or not that retention pond would have a sprinkler in it and that would be keep mosquitoes out because our we have a lot, a lot of problem with mosquitoes. Mosquitoes in the neighborhood, but we do have one of the trucks in the town that come through every so often and and does what they do, what they do with that. But that would, that would increase, I'm sure, if there's no sprinkler, it's just a place for mosquitoes to develop. Uh, the other thing is that come up several times is if indeed this does come about, well, the apartment building, that there'd be some type of sound barrier put up along the backside of Gulf Acres where this par four village is put up to keep that noise from coming into our neighborhood. Uh, one of the questions I had, and I could never answer it, was whether or not this was considered low-income housing. You know, and I think most people, when they hear that, they get they cringe, especially with property values and everything. Uh, so there was some definitely concern about that. And the other thing would be if indeed when this starts with the construction vehicles, how will they get into and out of this project? Will they be coming down Crampton Road through the addition? And I guess I'm done. Is that correct? <laughs> I'll let you finish, sir. I got, I got one more. Okay, one more. Yeah, just, just uh, the last thing is the only other concern that we have right now, and I think I alluded to it last time, was you've got this 20-acre development going on, and I was worried about other, the 20 acres, maybe they can build some more behind that. The 30-acre guy, we don't know what his plans are. If indeed they do build houses or homes or whatever, would that mean that all that traffic would continue to come out through Crampton? That's all I got to say. Okay. If you'd give your name and um, address so that it can be in the. Okay. Richard Leganow, 5758 Crenshaw Drive, Hope Mills. Thank okay. you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Mayor, we have um, 21 residents that have submitted comments related to this uh, same issue. Um, they're all against the opening of, of the road. Um, we have Sandra Sellover from 3615 Crampton Road. We have Shauna Buford from 5705 Crenshaw Drive. Douglas Del Sedato, 3525 Crampton Road. Denise Singer, 3714 Floyd Drive. Thurman Blackman and Marie M. Blackman, 3600 Crampton Road. Eileen Clary, who did not give her street address. Mike Gillis, 3616 Crampton Road. Craig Hampton, 3531 Crampton Road. Katrina Finch, 3713 Hagee Street. Tony Harrison, 5341 Pringle Way. Brian Smith, 5747 Crenshaw Drive. Kay and Cliff Nelson, 3611 Crampton Road. Rhonda Poole, 3518 Crampton Road. Herschel and Marion Caldwell, who did not give a street address. Sharon Perry, 3508 Crampton Road. Robert Wog, did not give a street address. Henry and Linda Curry, 5805 Rawls Court. Michael Perry, 3508 Crampton Road. Chuck Tatum, on behalf of Joyce Tatum, 5741 Crenshaw Drive. And Miriam D. Crisco, Cris, Crisio, 3604 Crampton Road. And all of those uh, are against the opening of the street. Okay, and for the record, we all, each of us has before us a copy of those uh, letters that were sent in uh, with their complete uh, comment, their, their opinions and comments in reference to the Crampton Road and the Par 4 Village Golf Course uh, development. So we do have those, and each board member has one. Okay. I have one more comment that is not related to this issue. 
Uh, it's from a Jeremy Brewerton. Um, he states, Miss Starling, in our absence of this evening's meeting, we would like to take a moment to address concerns as seven-year business owners in the city of Hope Mills. My wife and I are the owners of Firehouse Subs on Camden Road. Today, we were asked to remove signs from the roadside advertising our business. We, as business owners, understand the importance of abiding by city policy, code, and rules, and have done so throughout the tenure of our business. We also understand this city thrives and continues to grow with the establishment of successful businesses and those services that are provided to the people and community. It is with great disappointment the city chooses to enforce frivolous sign advertisement code during these unprecedented times with the biz when the businesses that make the city who it is are struggling to stay open. We would hope for the opposite and the city would reach out during these peril times to assist in every way possible to help them stay afloat. We completely understand the importance of enforcing that code during normal circumstances and we support that, but the aesthetics of the city roadside are surely not as appalling as closed businesses from lack of city support. We would ask the city to at least relax code enforcement during these unpredictable times and support local businesses in every way possible. Firehouse of America has diligently worked alongside franchi franchisees to promote business and encouraged proactive measures to keep businesses in operation. Businesses are having to adapt to change from normal operations to overcome this pandemic. Companies are revisiting marketing strategies and services to satisfy the need of the community. We are asking the city to show their support in this fight to regain normalcy. I would at least hope this short email will incite discussion of the importance of supporting local businesses. Sincerely, Firehouse Subs, local business franchisees. Thank you. And that concludes our public comments for this evening. The next item on our agenda is our consent agenda. Is there anything that you'd like moved from our consent agenda to new business? If not, do I have a motion to approve that what's before you? Motion to approve. Second. Have a motion and second. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. Seeing none opposed. The next item of business is consideration of ordinance amendment 50 S2020-03, changing the appearance commission to a committee requested by the Board of Commissioners on July the 6th. And this is behind tab four. And I turn it over to Ms. Adams. This is the uh, proposed change um, that the board asked that we bring back. Um, I would ask that you read the agenda item carefully because this is going to um, remove the ability of the appearance committee to be able to do the things that they do without coming to the board for approval. Um, I think originally this was set up as a commission in our ordinances to allow them to be able to do the things that they do without that um, restriction. They're kind of a little bit of a unique com commission. So what this does is just make any authority they have recommendation authority to the board for final decision on. So give me, I'll give you an example of that. The appearance, the yard of the month would have to be brought to us and mm -hmm. approved yeah. before it could be um, yeah. delivered as it was this evening. Mm -hmm. Those kinds of decisions, that's an example. Uh, another example which I was brought to my mind was, was when they decide on what kind of ribbon they're going to use for Christmas or what kind of plants they're going to plant. Before they can be purchased, it had to be brought back to the board for consent. So. So that's the, yeah. that that's some of the, the simple of the simple decisions like that that would you know require the board's approval. So, what's your Maybe wishes? Ma yes, ma'am. May I go ahead and make a motion? Yes, ma'am. I'd like to make a motion to leave the appearance commission the same and not change it to committee. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second to keep the commission uh, as it is, appearance commission instead of changing it. Uh, any other discussion? Well, I'd just like to say, I, at, at first, I think we were trying to be 
equal across the board, but the historical commission was a little different. And um, for instance, if they need to buy a bag of mulch, I don't want them to have to come to the board to vote first to vote for them to bag, buy a bag of mulch. So uh, that is my explanation as to why I do yes. not want to move forward with making it a committee. Okay. So with that, all those in favor of keeping it as a commission, please raise your right hand. And seeing none opposed, thank you very much. The next item on our agenda is a non-public hearing item, case number 17-074, consideration of Dirty Whiskey Saloon, CP Site Plan Review, Hope Mills and County Zoning Ordinance, Zone CP and A1, acres 5.51, located 5431 and 5435, Corporation Drive, submitted by Jerry and Jacqueline Hall, owners and 40 Site Solutions, Scott Bright, Brown Design Firm. And I'll turn it over to Mr. McLaughlin. Hello, Madam Mayor. Um, I guess you know you're getting old, you got to take your glasses off to read. But <laughs> or put anyway. them on. <laughs> I, I had to put them on to sit over or there and I had to take on. them off to actually read it. Um, as stated, this is case 17-074. Um, um, this is for a site plan approval tied to an existing brewery. Um, 5431 and 5435 Corporation Drive currently developed with the existing Dirtbag Ales Brewery, which was approved in 2018 and annexed into the town of Hope Mills. The development was approved for uh, food production, a restaurant, a recreational amusement, outdoor pavilion, sports fields, a, play, a kids play area, a farmer's market, and a bar, which are all currently open for operation. The site is 5.51 acres in size and has approximately 527.75 feet of frontage along Corporation Drive and is zoned under the CP Plan Commercial District. The site has a large open grass area that is currently not developed and the overall site is currently served by PwC water and sewer utilities. Egress and ingress to the site is currently provided off of Corporation Drive with an existing parking lot that provides for 70 spaces. In terms of the proposed development, the property owner is requesting to build a 6,000 square foot whiskey bar that will include a storage area for the entire development. The proposed structure will be located on the southeastern portion of the site where the open grass sports field area is currently located. There will be 10, a 10 foot pedestrian sidewalk around the proposed structure with a covered seating area in the rear. The existing access off of Corporation Drive will remain the same and the new proposed parking lot that provides for 75 additional spaces will connect with the existing parking area on the southwest portion of the development. What you have here in yellow is an aerial photograph of the subject property. And what you see here is the site plan. The area that you see faded out on the right is the existing Dirtbag Ales development. And the area to the left of the site plan in bold is the proposed new structure and proposed um, parking area. As you can see before, I stated that the entrance will remain the same. Uh, sidewalks are required um, to be put along Corporation Drive. Um, and that's basically it. All the other uses on site are currently um, operating and they will not um, be altered in any way. But I'd like to open up the floor to any questions that you may have. And all of this was annexed in, right? Yes. When it was yes. One, one big piece of property. Yeah. Well, okay. it, the original dirt bag was approved in the county and then annexed in, so it is ours now. So okay. what this basically is is just them building out a vacant portion of the site. Uh, if you go out there now, it's that really, really beautifully meant a uh, lawn uh, area um, on the left side where they technically call it overflow parking and soccer fields. I don't know if I've ever seen it used as soccer, but this is where that particular building will be um, built. Any questions for Mr. McLaughlin in reference to this? Madam Mayor, I have a yes, comment. Sir. Yeah. Well, I have a question too. I found something interesting in the condition sheet packet on page three at the very bottom, and I'll read it. Number, it's item number 22. Turn lanes may be required by the Hope Mill Street Department and NC Department of Transportation, NCDOT. My question is, when I read may be required, what's going to determine the requirement for turn lanes 
question one. That's part part of the first question. Second question, and then who's responsible for paying for these turn lanes? Um, basically, because Corporation Drive is a DOT road, that decision would rest solely on DOT. Um, and I also think that if they did require this, now I haven't seen any indication from DOT comments that they would require that, but if it was required, it would be uh, required to be paid for by the property owner. Um, we would have no, um, the only connection to this site we would have is when they put in the three uh the sidewalks they're required to do a third party encroachment agreement so we would take over the maintenance of the sidewalks but to answer to your questions the if there is a diesel lane that is required that will be required specifically by dot and the cost of it would have to be paid for by the um, developer and that's because that is a DOT as a D corporation drives a DOT road. That's okay, correct. so DOT would make that determination. Yes, that's correct. Okay. I don't know why they put on here um, the town of Hope Mills you, department. And if you look on page five of six, uh, number uh, 33, 30, 35, mm -hmm. it tells you Corporation Drive is identified as a local road mm -hmm. in the Metropolitan Transportation Plan, with no constructions or improvements planned. So that's almost answering the other one in that they don't plan to do turn lanes. That's my point. And so I, I imagine it would just be determined if the, mm -hmm. if the numbers of people going out there require it, and that probably would be something that would be noticeable. Just in, in fluid disclosure, there is a growing, um, I wouldn't call it a concern, but it's, it's tied to how successful this development is because there's so many people to go to, and that's what you would want for a business. Correct. There are some problems being created with with the magnitude of people that come to the site people having to park down corporation drive and walk up to it um, the sidewalk would handle that but because corporation drive is a dot road we really have no uh control over remedying it um, at all and because it's uh did outside the site is in the county it's really a sheriff issue but um, in regards to the turn lane, um, the only thing I can think of is that typically DOT will require a traffic study if, because of the proposed project, they feel that it's uh, above a certain threshold. I'm not aware of any of those requirements coming into play um, place as of yet. But what we do have is that condition sheet also says that we can't issue the CO until all local and state approvals have been granted. So if in the event, because um, when they're getting their external approvals if DLT requires that our role would just simply be to hold the CO until they actually uh, meet those requirements from DLT but we would not have any control over enforcing it on uh, requiring or uh, constructing. Well, and, and thank you mayor because I was going to mention that item on number 33 and then circle back to the item that you just talked about with the CO so mm -hmm. that's what kind of prefaced the question about the language about turn lanes may be required because this is something that, that's rare I've seen in packets and especially in condition sheets. Yeah. When I yeah, and when I looked at I saw this and was like, wait a minute here. This now, is something what you kinda... have to understand too is the condition sheet is a collection mm -hmm. of all the pertinent yeah. regulatory um, regulations from all departments. So there are things on here that will be enforced from fire. There'll be mm -hmm. things on here that were are enforced by DOT, my department, stormwater and things of that nature. I'm thinking maybe the county put that in there as a placeholder. I'm not sure. Yeah. Sometimes an agency will put a generic comment on it to preserve their ability to enforce it later. But in terms of who has that jurisdictional authority, that would be DLT. Now, if this was a town of Hope Mills Road, then that falls right in public works. But because it's yeah. corporation, then it's um, rest solely on DLT. See, that was the red flag to me when it had Hope Mills Street Department and I don't know why they that was that. the flag. Yeah. I'm not sure. Like I said, the only um, connection we'd have um, at the street level would be once they put in the sidewalks, we do a third party encroachment agreement um, that we take over the maintenance of the sidewalks after the construction of the development. Thank you, Mayor. Uh -huh. Nobody else has any comments. I'll go ahead and make the motion. Okay. Madam Mayor, I yes, um, If people are parking on Corporation Drive, does that mean we're not requiring enough parking spaces on site? You know, that's a really good question because when it came up, 
um, based on what we have the authority to do, our parking requirement is minimum parking re um, requirement in, uh, required in our ordinance. So mm -hmm. it's set up based on the use. So based on um, the type of building, and it's, it's kind of different because that's a pretty large building, but the majority of that building is the area that they make the beer in. The actual inside of the Dirtbag Ales Brewery is very small with respect to the area that people sit. So based on the parking requirement for that use and all the active uses, they are actually in full compliance. There are some instances like you have a development like Lowe's where they may build more about 100 parking spaces more than what's required. We don't have the authority to make them build more. So this is why this is a very unique situation based on what the uses are requiring as opposed to as it relates to parking they are in full compliance it's just that they have a business that's so successful that a lot of people go to it so it creates a very unique situation but um we've looked at it several times they are they don't have an issue with respect to being in violation of the parking i would just be concerned that someone would get killed uh, we we've talked to the sheriff department state troopers uh our police department we've all looked at it and based on the way the situation is it's a jurisdictional nightmare but our police department doesn't have any authority over it we don't have anything um any authority over anything outside the site and the road is a dot road it's a I don't want to say it's a good problem but it's a problem that's created by the success of the building um, and I think the sidewalks along Corporation Drive at least remedies this problem at the site. But um, I've even been out there, and I don't, I don't think anyone has a solution. It is becoming a public safety issue. I think DOT has started um, posting no parking signs and things of that nature. They said they won't get involved until the parking starts to erode the embankment. But there's really nothing that um that that is out of compliance with this site as it relates to the town hope men's regulations thank you ma'am Mayor. that's all for me jesse okay commissioner bell flowers you make the motion okay anybody else no make a motion we approve case number 17-074 consideration of the dirty whiskey saloon CP site plan review, Hope Mills and County Zoning Ordinances, zoned CP and A1, acreage 5.51 acres, plus or minus, located at 5431 and 5435 Corporation Drive, SR 2333, submitted by Jerry and Jacqueline Hall, owners, and 4D Site Solutions, Scott Brown Design Firm, Hope Mills County. Have a motion, have a second. Second. Have a motion and second. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. Seeing none opposed. Next item on our agenda is a non public hearing item, case number 20 085. Consideration of the Federal PWC Rockfish Creek Basin Flow Facility. Site plan review. Hope Mill Zoning Ordinance Zone R7.5, R10, R6A, and CD. Acreage is 45.12 acres plus or minus, located on southwest side of North Carolina Highway 162, southeast of Service Road 1107, Fisher Road, submitted by Federal PwC developer, Hope Mills, and I'll turn it over to Mr. McLaughlin. All right, um, try to make this really quick. Um, the subject property, as stated, is a 45.12 acre tract located along the eastern side of the existing Georgetown Estate subdivision in an area not currently suitable for residential development due to its location in a flood zone. The site is heavily wooded and is currently zoned under the R75, R6 A and C D districts. Um, the property has approximately 1,470 feet of street frontage along Highway 162 and is currently serviced by PwC Water and Sewer. In terms of the proposed development, PwC is proposing to construct the Rockfish Creek Basin Peak Flow Facility on the subject property that will serve as an overflow storage system used during peak flow periods of time. Access to the site will be provided through a 20-foot wide asphalt drive off of George Owens Road. This is an aerial photograph uh, in yellow. The area to the far left of the screen is the um, uh, a large portion of the Georgetown State's um, subdivision. I pointed that out just to let you know that this is a considerable distance away from that subdivision. 
but this entire area is heavily wooded, undevelopable, and not suited for residential construction. This is an actual site plan. Um, as you can see, um, most of it is outside of the wetland area, but that's a small portion of it that's not considered wetlands. And it's just basically um, uh, a, a tank that they use that will basically handle um, overflow during peak situations. But I'd like to open up the floor to any questions that you may have. Anyone have any questions for Mr. McLaughlin? Madam Mayor, if there's no questions, I'd like to make a motion that we approve case number 20-085 for the consideration of the Fayetteville PWC and Rock Patient Flow Facility for the site plan review. Have a motion to have a second. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. Seeing none opposed. Next on our agenda item is a non-public hearing item, case 20-088, consideration of the Mill Village, CP, C3, and R10 site plan review. Hope Mill Zoning Ordinance Zone CP, C3, and R10, acreage 20.34 acres plus or minus, located on the west side of North Carolina Highway 59, Hope Mills Road, north of Service Road 1003, Camden Road, and it's been submitted by Riddle Commercial Properties Developer, Scott Brown, 4D Solutions. And I'll turn it over to Mr. McLaughlin. Um, as stated, the property uh, is 20.34 acres um, in size. It's located at the along the west side of Highway 59, which is Hope Mills Road and Camden Road. The site is currently developed with an advanced auto part establishment with the rest of the entire site existing as the vacant parts of land. If you recall, this is that area besides signing they've been building up for it ever. Um, there is a huge wetland area to the west and south of the site with the current egress and ingress provided off of Hope Mills Road between Advanced Auto Parts and Sonic. The site is zoned under the CP Plan Commercial and R75 single family districts and has approximately 1,570 linear feet of frontage along the Hope Mills Road with 250 feet of frontage along Edward Drive. In terms of the proposed development, I'm going to put the site plan up when I describe it. This is the aerial photograph. Uh, the area that you see carved out, that's Sonic. For some reason, that they're not absorbing this portion of the development. Um, this is the site plan. The proposed project anticipates the development of a commercial retail shopping center that will have four separate commercial structures and will also absorb the existing advanced auto parts store. The vehicular access to the site will be relocated to a more centralized entrance off of Hope Mills Road with a secondary entrance off of Elwood Drive. Building 1, which is uh, right in dead center of the site, is proposed at 22,245 square feet with building 2 proposed at 18,900 square feet, building 3 at 8,192 square feet, and building 4 proposed at 3,288 square feet. Due to the fact that the two parcels were building number four all the way to the far right of the, the site plan um, is um, currently zoned R75. A rezoning to a commercial district will be required to facilitate this portion of the development whenever they get to that phase. A solid buffer is required along the northern portions of the site and there are a total of 253 parking spaces required. Sidewalks will be required along Hopeman's Road and Elwood Drive. I'd like to open up the floor to any questions that you have. Madam Mayor. Yes, sir. Chancellor, how yeah. many entrances and exits are required with this site plan? Technically, um, only one entrance is required. Um, I think they um, okay. made the uh, Elwood Drive entrance just as an easier way to flow through the site. I'm not sure. Um, but I do know that what I am hearing, and I don't know if you guys, this may not be the most positive information, but they are, DLT is technically proposing extending the uh, median down Hope Mills Road all the way to Cumberland. Um, so what I, I think the thing that's speeding this project up is with that centralized entrance that you see here. Yeah. Right. So they're shifting it 
here, and that is if you look at it, it's a three-lane entrance. That's a major intersection. So I think they're trying to get that in to coincide with that proposed construction. But um, I think they just put it a few put the future driveway in there just to have some extra access. But it's not a requirement. Um, if you're dealing with residential construction, a secondary entrance may be required in the fire code if you don't want to sprinkle the residential um, um, units. But I'm not aware of that requirement being in place for commercial construction. I think the developer proposed that just so that he can have a secondary entrance. But that is coming off of Elwood through a neighborhood. Mayor, Mayor. Okay. Yes, Thank you, Mayor. Yes, sir. Chancellor, if they put a, a island in the road, there won't be a, a, a left-hand turn into that because there's no turn lane there. Is that correct? Yeah. If you look at it, if you look very closely, it's a right turn out coming out of it. Yeah. Um, you don't see a left turn uh, allowed coming out of that site. Um, so that's kind of my dead ringer of knowing there won't be one. they're not going to allow you to make a left turn coming out of that project. If you look at the, the far right uh, lanes are both going in, and then that left lane is one uh, coming out to the right. It would probably, based on the traffic that's on that road, that future driveway probably would be advantageous, especially if, if they already own the property. or Yeah. Because those lots on Elwood at the beginning of it have already been. I think he owns those. I was going to say they've yeah. already been purchased and cleared. Yeah. And then that way you would be able to get in and out. Plus you could go through that neighborhood and come on out. He's been contemplating this for a long time. Yeah. I'll tell you, uh, when he started building the site up, he was getting the field dirt from Lowe's. Um, just in full disclosure, Lowe's and Chick-fil-A were trying to go in at the current, um, what Chick-fil-A was trying to go in down by the, uh, credit union and so chick-fil-a ended up moving to where lowe's is now but it came a couple years later same guy that owns this owns chick-fil-a site so he brokered a deal with lowe's to get the field dirt from their detention pond to help him build up this site he used the field dirt from chick-fil-a to help build it up and he purchased those um, properties off Elwood. So he's been gearing up, but I think he's building that elevation of the site up because of the wetland issue. Um, we've had a preliminary sketch plan about this uh, with this about maybe eight months ago. But um, right now, we still do not know um, exactly what the buildings are going to be. I'm hearing rumblings, but we haven't gotten anything. There's a fit for life sign out there now. Um, but we hadn't gotten anything official um, through this proposal that tells us building four is this, building two is this. I will say at 22,000 square feet, I got a pretty good uh, idea of what building one would probably be. But I haven't gotten anything from the developer that tells me exactly what it is. Madam Mayor, I have a follow-up yes, question. With, with the amount of traffic that's on Hope Mills Road, would DOT require a dedicated right-hand turn lane? into this complex that that's really a I, I i really don't know um a lot of times um i may see a development that i may anticipate what i think dot may do but there's these, a bunch of engineering uh calculations that they use in variables um i'm not sure exactly what they're requiring here but just like any other project before this can move forward for construction, they will be required to get a DLT approval on this. Um, but DLT has not chimed in to my level to, to let me know what they're contemplating um, with a deceleration lane. I'm almost certain a traffic impact study is going to have to be required um, to do something of this That's magnitude. My next um, and now that may actually dictate yeah. what they call the road diet, yeah. um, with, whether it's a uh, decel lane, uh, how far that dedicated lane has to stretch the duration of property, things of that nature. Um, but we don't have any timeline on when that actually uh, will occur. I do think with what I said about the rezonings of the residential pieces, I think they're just going to make that a future phase, but they want to get this project started in a, ahead of uh, some some improvements that they're anticipating along Hope Miss Road. He had a question. What all can be built on the zoning that they are requesting? 
they're not requesting the rezoning. It's already zoned commercial. They're just requesting to have the uh, ability to build it. Ninety percent of the entire site is commercial. It's just those. If you look at this area, that small, the smallest building, um, building four, is the one that's on a small piece of property that is zoned residential. That's the piece they'll have to come back and rezone at a later date. But 90%, 95% of the entire site is zoned for what they're proposing. Any other questions? Do we have a motion? I can make it, Mayor, if you want. All right. Make a motion. We approve case 20-088, consideration of the Mill Village, CP, C3. C3 and R10 site plan review, Hope Mill zoning ordinance, zone CP, C3, and R10 acreage, 20.34 acres plus or minus, located on the west side, NC Highway 59, Hope Mills Road, north of SR 1003 Camden Road, submitted by Riddle Commercial Properties developer, Scott Brown, 4D Site Solutions Engineers, Hope Mills. Have a motion to have a second? Second. Have a motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Seeing none opposed. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Next, we have on our agenda discussion of grass mowing weeds, trash, and debris on NCDOT roads. And this was requested by Commissioner Bellflowers. And let me turn it over to Mr. Commissioner Bellflowers. Or I know that Miss Adams has provided a lot of information. Uh, did you want to speak to that, or? Yes, Madam Mayor. Um, <clears throat> So in my agenda item that I prepared um, uh, on behalf of Commissioner Bellflowers for this item, um, I noted that we have reached out to um, NCDOT um, and I got a response back today um, from uh, Richie Hines and I'd like to read it. Okay. Um, due to COVID and budget issues, our response times and operational efforts have been delayed. Our roadside environmental unit expects to be able to spray the worst areas in the next couple of weeks and has mowing operations via a private contractor underway. We have had to reduce the number of mowing cycles, which will mean our roadsides will not appear to be as well kept as they do in typical years. Litter pickup is performed by our maintenance forces and it has been hindered as well. I wish that I had a better response for you, but we do appreciate the town's patience and understanding while we are working through these times. Please let me know if you need anything additional. Thank you. Madam Mayor. Yes, sir. Thanks, Melissa. You're welcome. I'll tell you what, what's, what has prompted this, this item on the agenda is there's been a lot of new people that's relocated and moved to Hope Mills. And a lot of folks that move here, they look at Hope Mills the same way I do. It's our community. They don't know that that little strip that we're talking about, the main strip between McDonald's and Walgreens, they believe it belongs to the town. They don't know that it belongs or maintained by DOT. They drive by it. They see all the trash that's in the road. There's boards, lumber, glass. In that intersection, on just about all four sides, on that piece of strip, the weeds are tall. Even the storm drains are clogged on that little strip. People see that. They think it's us. They believe it's us. Can I offer a solution that was brought to us by our mayor's youth leadership? I think that was one. Their theme for this past year was Hope Mills Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And what they wanted to target was the people throwing the litter out. Yeah. Because they believed that what was happening was that the people that are throwing it out, we need to somehow get them to understand um, that they're causing the issue that we see the unsightly issue and one of their solutions was that to if you pick it up it doesn't attract more 
and that's where these the youth that cleaned up Hope Mills Lake uh, up on Legion Road and up on 162 now we've got some families that go out there and pick it up and the reason why is because if it if they clean it up it doesn't attract more so I'm just thinking that we need to do something we did have some PSAs and some things that those youth were working on prior to COVID to encourage our community to be cleaner and also not throw things out um, so that's one thing I think we yes it, it's unsightly looking but we've got to say where is it coming from and that has to be coming from our either our citizens or people passing through so we've got to do a good faith effort to try to clean it up and I think it's behoovance to all of us if you see trash then you know if you can make an effort to help I think if they see us helping pick it up and even maybe those businesses you know I'm thinking um, if we contacted Verizon and said if you you know if you got some spare time spare we, we've, re we've repeatedly yeah. done that with the businesses mm -hmm. we have because I think that would be yeah because Commissioner Leg um, it's been a little while but mm -hmm. um, he had indicated you know that that area along the fence was uh, in bad shape and we so we periodically reach yeah. out to them as well as DOT. Um, yeah. You know, we've asked them about that reditching the ditch line in front of Sea Wayne Collier. Mm -hmm. But you can only ask so many times. Um, and then it, I mean, yeah. how many times do you? Right. It, well, <laughs> I, I got that. But there's also, there's also folks like myself and many that live in our community that would volunteer their own time to go and clean that strip up. They do it themselves, Madam Mayor, because mm -hmm. it belongs to us. I, I actually um, reached out to Mr. Cisco and I asked him if he could give me maybe some streets that needed to be um, adopted. But I'm going to personally adopt the street. I contacted the gentleman today, but I did ask him to give me like certain areas because I will have children 12 years old and mm -hmm. older. I mean, older, of course, but I will have children with me sometimes. So I am going to personally adopt the street. I'll probably have different groups with me. I don't know if the commissioners want to do one. We'll do a challenge um, when my uh, commission or my committee is established. We'll work mm -hmm. with the mayor's group to um, adopt some streets if we can. And um, I actually reached out to a couple of groups that already have streets adopted in Hope mm -hmm. Mills, but of course they said they had not really been active since COVID. Mm -hmm. But they did also ask me for some other streets that they would help with um, if we needed their help right now mm -hmm. so I, I i agree with you yep. commissioner bell i was out like i said i'm contacted the gentleman today um but i'm gonna probably work with don to find something that is suitable for children to work but um, mm -hmm. i'm gonna adopt the highway yeah. myself well, and, and that was the intent with the high schools so is each mm -hmm. high school taking their vicinity of where they are um, and work through it that way um mm -hmm. but i do believe we've got to if we can come up with a way of encouraging um and it might mean that you know we've got a yard of the month we might do a business yard of the month if you if you start looking at uh, drawing attention to the good things that they can make their make it look like and of course those areas that need the most attention are those intersections where yeah. for whatever reason people throw yeah. out trash and just um, as another note about those intersections so I believe the majority of those intersections would also require a lane closure mm -hmm. so Again, that's MCDOT that would need to facilitate mm -hmm. that, um, as well as having the proper liability forms mm -hmm. and well, you, things filled out for um, volunteers yeah. to do. Yeah. So. Within the paperwork that you provided, there is the contact person, and that person is who we were using when we cleaned 162. Um, so there, and he's local. I don't know, I haven't found it in here yet, but there is a person. Uh, that you can call and what they'll do is they provide you the stuff you need yes. and you can volunteer we, we did 162 uh, David Plummer mm -hmm. yeah ma'am there yes sir normally in the springtime for the river sweep the area of McDonald's and Verizon and all that is what my group always cleaned but this year we were kind of we thrown off a little bit yeah. so yeah. We didn't get down there to do it. I apologize for that. Well, no, the, the litter sweep was canceled due yeah. to COVID. Yeah. 
so mm -hmm. and I'm not sure about the fall litter sweep <laughs> yet. So, you know, that's another thing that's kind of um, exaggerated the problem. Yeah. Um, it's made it worse. Um, so, it does look bad. There's no terrible. There's no way around Absolutely that. terrible. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other discussion on that item? Appreciate you bringing that up, uh, Commissioner Bellflowers, and I. I too hope that we can work on it um, with Just people thank volunteering all the citizens. to help. And then I will tell you that they did send out. Uh, they had told me that the the Smith home beside me has been sold. DOT purchased it, mm -hmm. and the grass and the the pond out front um, and the swimming pool in the back um, is been not only for mosquitoes but the grass was waist high in some spots they did come out and cut it this week this past week and they um, brought big tractors out to clear it to cut it so I know that there's a cycle but I know after July 1 was when there were uh, some things had to take place because of financial things too okay all right the next okay. time on the agenda is uh, I am uh, of course you know that I did appoint a committee uh, and that committee is going to meet um, hopefully this week uh, and that committee is for a Goffview driveway study committee I had been asked if there'd be a possibility of putting a, a resident of that area on the committee and after we thought about it we said that even though what we're trying to do is come up with a solution on golf um, Goffview that probably uh, to make the the community especially all the people that are concerned uh, feel better we would uh, take a recommendation from them and of course I talked to former Commissioner Eddie Maynard and he was willing to serve on uh, on our committee so I just asked the board approval to add one more member to the Goffview study uh, committee and that would be uh, Eddie Maynard who actually lives in um, Golf Acres. Madam Mayor, I'll make that motion. <clears throat> Mr. Maynard I think every neighborhood, when there's a committee for them, I think they should have a voice. Yeah, Without they should. a voice, you don't have mm -hmm. much of a chance, you know, of getting anything for your neighborhood. And I know he's probably very passionate about his neighborhood, and I know he's passionate about this town. So I would make the motion to allow you, if that's what's necessary, to appoint Mr. Maynard to this committee to study the entranceway. Okay, I have a motion to have a second. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand and we'll just need to um, give him, which would have to have 48 hour notice anyway for that committee. So that's the only thing he asked so that he could arrange his clients. Um, next thing we have is uh, the nominating committee and I'll turn that over to Mayor Pro Tem and Commissioner Edwards. Um, the nominated met, committee met on Friday. We had one seat open for the Appearance Commission and the Veterans Affairs Committee. And we, the nominating committee, would like to nominate Mr. Demetrius Polk for the Appearance Commission and um, Mr. Robert Kukski for the Veterans Affairs Committee. Okay. Mayor. Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion. We go with the nominating committee's recommendation. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. Seeing none opposed. Next we go to uh, the manager's report. Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Mayor, mm -hmm. Board of Commissioners. I do have some additional updates um, since my manager's report went out with the addition of uh, Planning and Economic Development Director Chancellor McLaughlin is currently reviewing changes to the code enforcement ordinances. Once he has completed his review and we have had an opportunity to go over those proposed changes, we will bring those changes, those proposed ordinance changes for board discussion and consideration. Because this board has directed me to streamline the agenda process, the finance department has been working on some pro proposed changes to some of the policies. Finance director Drew Holland has been reviewing those proposed changes, spe specifically to the travel policy and the purchasing policy. Once he and I have completed our review, we will bring the proposed changes for board discussion and consideration. I have received a request from a local restaurant 
for the Town of Hope Mills to consider a local ordinance allowing alcohol sales at 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings rather than noon. In 2017, the state of North Carolina passed Senate Bill 155, the Brunch Bill, which would allow alcohol sales beginning at 10 a.m. on Sundays. But counties and local governments need to pass their own ordinances. The City of Fayetteville passed their ordinance allowing the sale of alcohol beginning at 10 a.m. in August 2017. The ordinance and discussion and consideration will be placed on the August 3rd regular meeting agenda as a new business item. On Thursday, July 16th, Finance Director Drew Holland, Parks and Recreation Direct Director LaMarco Morrison, and myself met with Dasman Ellerby to discuss the feasibility of transportation options for town residents. The Board of Commissioners asked for the costs for the routes, with Route 103 to include FTCC. All routes are daily, Monday through Friday, with option one presented by Mr. Ellerby split between Fayetteville and Hope Mills at a cost of $135,687. Route 102, Hope Mills route, which would include Traymore Village, The Lake, Trade Street, Town Hall, and Walmart. Route 103, which is the Fayetteville route, Cross Creek Mall, VA Hospital, Cape Fear Medical, and FTCC. Um, option two, one route stays in town for seniors and special needs, which would include Traymore Village, Lake, the Lake, Trade Street, Town Hall, and Walmart at a cost of $87,000. And option three of merging both options together, option one and two, at a cost of $250,000. After much discussion concerning the current situation with funding and the COVID-19 pandemic, and so that we would be able to research possible grant funding, it was decided mutually upon the three parties that we would bring these proposed costs forward with more detail to the budget retreat in March of 2021. Since that time, um, Parks and Rec Director LaMarco Morrison has researched the funding options. And it may be possible, we're looking into it, but if it is available to bring it to you sooner, um, we will do that. If, if we can get 100%, which that's kind of what we're looking for. So. At the July 6th regular meeting, Mayor Pro Tem McRae asked for discussion and possible action on the formation of a Hope Mills Millennial Advisory Committee, with the ages of the members to be between the ages of 18 and 39. The consensus of the Board of Commissioners was to have me bring, back, bring back a proposal outlining the duties and rules and procedures for the proposed committee. Once adopted, we would advertise for members. Since that meeting, Mayor Pro Tem McRae, Town Clerk Jane Starling, Executive Assistant Deputy Clerk Town Clerk Tiffany Shattuck, and myself have been in conversation about having a contest to name the committee. Ms. Shattuck has created a flyer about the contest, and we have posted it to our social media pages and the website and I'll give you all a copy of the flyer, and then behind it is um, some proposed draft language um, concerning the committee. This is really cool. Mm. And it, since she has posted it, we've not received one um, recommendation, Thank so you. we need your help in getting the word out, please. Okay. Copy for you. Okay, okay. And I believe that concludes my updates. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh. <laughs>
Right. Madam Mayor, do we need to take action on these proposed no, committee bylaws? No. Okay. To you yet. Okay. That's just for you to look at. Informational. Informational. Okay. Um, okay. Once um, um, Dan and um, Jane and I have had a chance to kind of look them over, and then we'll bring it back. Once the, I think once the committee's named, okay. then we'll bring that back, and then um, then we'll advertise for membership. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, that we do have, uh, and I have been asked if we can, um, for some of our committees, if we can have it so that it's live since people can't come in to see the committee meetings. Mm -hmm. um, it was requested and I, I didn't, It's I guess it's be how difficult that would be in order to do that. What, what is the, the committee meetings. Because see, the committee meetings, see, the committee meetings are open to the public but the public can't come. Zoom them. So that was that was the thought was. I don't know if we could zoom them or if we if if you just because they can't they don't participate anyway they just come and watch basically. So we could do what we've done with this is just have it a, a live broadcast. But mm -hmm. uh, that was and I don't know if that's feasible or not. Especially uh, you need to make sure there's a quorum before you set everything up. But just I'll throw that out there. Yes. Okay. Madam um, Mayor, since we're yes. still under a manager's report, I got one thing from Melissa, please. And it's something I overlooked on Saturday when I was at the lake Saturday morning. I noticed that all of our trash cans are full at the lake on Saturday morning. I'll tell you where this is going. There's a tremendous amount of bees that are around those trash cans when they're full. And, it, and what's attracting those bees is syrup items and drink items. So I asked the attendant who was there, and that's Rich, and y'all know who he is. He's a super great guy, and, and my hat, my hat's off to him. I asked him, I said, how many times a week are these trash cans being emptied? And he told me only once, and that's Monday. So we've got a lot of full trash cans that are down at the lake that are only being picked up one day a week. And I watched him. He was hauling several of those trash cans and full out to the curb. So my question is, I think we can do better than that. I think we can pick up those trash cans at least twice a week. I mean, Monday and Thursday. Because you look at the amount of traffic that's down there at that lake right now, that has been down there for the past weeks. And I don't care how many trash cans you put down there, you're going to fill them up. And then once they fill up, then they just become beehives. And the last thing we need is family members to be injured by bees from overfilled trash cans that are only picked up one day a week. So I'm, I give that to you, Melissa. I, I should have told you that on, on Saturday. It was just an oversight on my part. But I wanted to bring it up tonight. Uh, you know, that if there's something we can do to at least get those cans empty twice a week. I mean, through the summer months at least. I mean, I know in the fall and the winter, you know, we could probably go back to once a week, but, you know, during the summer months, they need to be empty twice. Okay. Oh, oh thank you, Mayor. I, I would probably like to include the, the trash cans around the walking trail, too. They're the same way. I don't really know. I didn't think that many people were out, but they get really full, too, I guess, on the weekend. Are out yeah. You ain't kidding. Because of COVID. Not, there's nothing to do. Because yeah. of COVID, yeah. they're out more. Yeah. It might even be feasible down at the lake to add some more trash cans just for the reason that there's so many people down there. We we might need to add some more for the summer because it's packed yeah, down there. It stays packed. Yeah. But if we can get them empty twice a week, I, that may be it. That may yeah. solve it if we can get them empty. Listen, mine at home is empty every week and they're still full of bees. So it doesn't, the recycle can is the worst because of drink cans and stuff like that in them. But the household garbage also has bees in them. But we need to take care of it so nobody gets stung yeah. mm -hmm. or injured in any way, shape, or form. Okay. All right, we do have uh, committee meetings coming up and then um, Staff comments, do you have anything, um, Ms. Starling? 
Mr. Hartsock, anything more? No. All right, official comments. Do we have any official comments this evening? Okay. I would just like to thank um, Chief Achardo and all of the other um, community citizens that participated in the conversation with our uh, police chief about, I don't really know what it was called, but it was a Zoom. And it's just for those who not, were not able to attend, it will be um, the Fayetteville Cumberland Human Rights Commission will be doing some training and have Pastor Mathis and some other people have um, invited, who, who have said they will help host some different um, community building type things with our police chief and the community. So I would just like to thank everybody that participated in that on last, on this past Tuesday. Mayor Mayor, I would like to thank Miss Adams for her help this past week and some concerns that I can contacted her about. Uh, Don, I'd like to thank you and you guys for everything that you've done to get us to where we're at now. Uh, and the next thing is the question, what's happening with across the street here? While school's out, about the sidewalks and things, the sewer lines. Um, um, the Rockfish Road sidewalk, um, there's nothing new since our last um, discussion about it. Thank you. That'll be all, thank you. Okay, anyone else? Okay, I too uh, want to comment on our our community forum that we had with Senator Devier uh, and the fact that we did have um, a good conversation. It went very well, and um, I do hope we can continue that. And I appreciate Dr. McCray uh, coming up with that idea, and then I think that the plan went very well. Uh, we now have a motion to go to... Madam Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to conduct a closed session pursuant to NCGS 143-318-11-A6 to discuss personnel matters. Have a motion. Have a second. Second. Have a second. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Seeing none opposed, we will retire to the front conference room uh, for a closed session at this time. We call our meeting back to order. Madam Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to move a move to seal the minutes of the closed session to, to such time as the release of the information will no longer frustrate the purpose of the closed session. And further, no action was taken. I have a motion to have a second. Second. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Seeing none opposed. I just want to mention one thing and then for long term, like the next board meeting, uh, to start looking at, I, got a, I have had several people ask me about our regular zoning ordinances and so I tried I, I particularly tried going through and looking at the questions that they had and if you if you go to our website if you try to look through this it's complicated it's ambiguous and so I'm just thinking maybe we need to I know that this is something has to be done by people above us but it might be a, a workshop or something on, on on maybe certain sections of, especially with all this subdivision stuff going on, because I think that's where most of the questions are coming from, um, you know, and and also the because in for example with the uh, the old zonings that had to be converted to new zonings, property that has sat there for a long period of time, how is that done? In other words, without having to have a it. You know, we just convert, like, I, I use par four, the new, uh -huh. there was a, a zoning there, and it w didn't have to be rezoned because they could use and just convert that old zone to the current zone. Well, if you don't know how to explain that, you know, that's some of the questions, but I think mainly is, it's just maybe this board, especially the ones that have never looked at this um, document, might be beneficial. But anyway, all righty, having said that. Yes. Can I can I ask a question about the public comment section and that before we get out of here? Sure. Is that can you explain to I, to me or to the board? I don't know if anybody else needs clarification. Um, what uh, Mr. Gardner was talking about. The mineral mineral, mineral rights. rights. Yeah, the, mineral the mineral rights. rights. So mineral mineral rights are rights that you have to any minerals that are underground, essentially. So if I had, for example, mineral rights 
to this property, I can make you take this building down to get to the minerals. Uh, I have rights to access the minerals underground and mine uh, to retrieve whatever minerals may be under there. So if you've got someone who has mineral rights under a piece of property, uh, they have the right to remove structures and get to the minerals underground. Uh, so it is, as, as you mentioned, it, it is a potential issue. Uh, if you build a large subdivision or something uh, on a property that someone else has the mineral rights, um, they could come in one day and say, okay, we're, we're getting the minerals out, so let's take these buildings away. But that's not a that's not a town issue. That's an issue it's, between. It's not. Uh, that is an issue for the subdivision and the. the I suppose the buyers uh, should should probably be made aware. But it's not a town issue. Um, what you would want to do is negotiate with them to purchase the mineral rights so that you don't have that issue of someone coming in. But that would yeah, be the developer. That would be the developer. Okay. So okay. the town the town has nothing absolutely nothing to do with that. I mean, I, I understand the mineral rights and I understand what that's saying, but the way he made it sound was, hey, if you build, if, if they build this, then at any time we can go underneath there or we can go get what we need. As a general rule, that is correct. Okay. But that has nothing to do with us. No. And right. Do the they have the mineral rights for our acreage? That's what I was going to ask. Because it would no. have come from the same Dixie Yarns. I think you only have it for the two properties, Mayor. I just wonder how yeah. it got separated it's out. It's not on ours. I don't think. I would suggest uh -huh. we right. check that out. Yeah, that might well, be a thought. I yeah, there's been a, there's I a, there's been a lot of research, Mayor, already, and I don't think so. I mean, I can, well, no. Melissa, you could check it out. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All righty. Not anything else? Do we have a motion? Motion, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn, guys. Second. Oh. Okay. All right, y'all have a good weekend. Good Stay rest of the week. Hurry, get out of here. Stay out of the heat. Who would that be? They don't have it. Charlie don't have it.